Good morning. It is good to be here with you. Uh, we're a little bit behind today because the computer just shut down out of nowhere and now we've started it back up and hopefully it's working. Who knows? Technology is great until it isn't. Yes. Um, but uh, it's good to be here with you. Good to be back with you. I know uh, Tim was here last week and uh, I wish I could have been with you guys to see Tim. Oh, we have to mute. Can you mute the... Oh, that's you. Okay. All right. <laughs> I hear my own voice, which is strange. Okay. Uh, but uh, so I'm looking forward to, to watching Tim's thing from last week, his message. I'm sure it was wonderful. Thank you all for being here for that. And uh, we continue to pray for Tim as he goes off to seminary. He starts um, in August and uh, will be training for the next two years to become a pastor. Been a DCE for I think 15 years or somewhere around there, maybe more than that. And uh, so now I'm going to become a pastor. What's that? DC, a D, sorry, Director of Christian Education through the, the LCMS. So uh, today we're going to be talking about Ecclesiastes and the meaning of life and finding purpose in life, something I think we all deal with um, and, and kind of question that from time to time. And so we'll be doing that today. And um, yeah, so uh, if you're online with us, welcome, and uh, I encourage you to follow along with us to be able to participate in the service. You can do that by clicking the link in the description if you're on YouTube or Facebook, and then that will take you to a page that has the video embedded as well as the order of service. All right, so we're going to go ahead and begin, and today we're going to have a, a time of confession and absolution that will include uh, some singing, and so that will uh, kind of all be together. But we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When we come into the presence of God, we cannot help but see our sinfulness. But God does not require us to cleanse our own sin and be perfect of our own power, for surely we could never achieve this. Instead, he tells us to come as we are and to receive his great mercy. We continue by singing, Come as you are, for the first few verses. We take a moment of silence to reflect on our lives and to confess our sins. Let's join together as we confess our sins. Heavenly Father, we confess that we have sinned against you and each other. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, and his suffering and death on the cross, please forgive us and help us to live according to your ways. Amen. The Lord our God is merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands and forgiving iniquity and transgressions of sin. Therefore, I announce unto you the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in his stead and by his command, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join together in our song of praise and thanksgiving, which is God so loved. Our reading is from the book of Colossians, chapter 3. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you too once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, 
which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. This is the word of the Lord. Our gospel reading for today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, verses, 9, or verses 13 through 21. Someone in the crowd said to him, to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care and be on your guard against covetousness. For one's life does not consist of the abundance of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man produced plentifully. And he thought to himself, What shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. All right. Kids, who do we have? Eli? Heidi? <laughs> is he walking yet? I don't know. Is Remy? He's walking. <laughs> Hi, you want to sit up here? Yeah. Here. Oh, hi. Here, have a seat. Oh, let me get down. There we go. That gets harder and harder. All right, sit back. Hi, Heidi. You look so far away when I look at you through the mirror. Hi, you want to sit here? <laughs> there you are. How are you doing? And here comes Remy. He's running. Well, not running, but you're making it. How you doing? Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, hi, Luke. Hey, everyone. And hi back there. I know you're not kids, but, you know, I'll just say hi anyways. All right, so I have a question for you. Have you ever... <laughs> hi again. <laughs> we like to do the mirror. Have you ever seen someone else get something that you wanted? That's never happened to you? Yeah. Mm, I wonder if that's the case. Has, let's say... Has your sister ever gotten, like, maybe an icy, and you wanted an icy? Uh, yeah. 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 And Heidi, has, has Luke ever gotten something that you wanted, like maybe a treat, like a cookie or a piece of cake, and you're like, I want that too. You like cake? Yeah. <laughs> I like cake too, a little too much. Yeah, but it's super yummy. We share cake. Hi. You share cake. Now, see, there you go. You share, right? So guess what? In our gospel lesson, someone came up to Jesus and he said, tell my brother to give me half of everything he has. Sit back. To give me half of the inheritance of this big gift that he'd gotten. So his brother had gotten a bunch of money and he wanted part of it. Just like maybe you wanted part of an icy or you wanted part of a cake or you wanted to run. Who knows? Right? And so he said, give, tell him to give me half of it. And you know what Jesus said? He said, don't be so focused on that. Don't worry about having all this money or forcing him to do it. Or maybe don't worry about forcing your sister to give you half of her icy or your brother to give you some of his cake or whatever it may be, right? Be satisfied with what you have and love God. He says to be rich towards God, which is to love God and trust in him. He says, that's where your focus should be. what? Lassoing. Lassoing? Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, so, but the point is to love God, trust him, whether we have a lot of stuff, sit back please, or whether 
We don't. So maybe we don't get a little bit of the icy. Maybe we don't get a little bit of the cake. Maybe we don't get a little bit of whatever it is we see that mom and dad have or something. But we can still be satisfied with that. Because you know what happens when all you want is the stuff that you see around you? You're never happy. It will make you sad. You'll be like, why don't I have all this stuff? And you can never have enough stuff. But when you want Jesus, guess what? He gives you all of himself. He says, I love you more than you can even know. Yeah, I love you too. Yes, that's true. But Jesus loves you even more than I do because he's Jesus. So we focus on him and not so much on all the things that are around us. So let's pray. All right. <laughs> Can you repeat? Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me and providing for me and help me to be satisfied to be happy with what you give rather than looking around at what other people have and wanting that. Amen? Amen. All right, you can go back to your seats. Yep. See you later, Remy. Run! <laughs> there you go. Well, Heidi was doing laps today. She's working out her energy. All right. So we're going to continue now with our sermon hymn, which is Take My Life and Let It Be. Well, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you please bow your heads and pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many blessings that you give us in life, for the provisions that you give us, for the life that you give us. And Lord, we also thank you for your word. And we pray that you would be with us this, during this time as we read your word and, and learn from it. That we would, by the power of your spirit, understand and be moved. That you would give me the words to speak, Lord, that I would preach faithfully. And pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So our passage for this week is from the book of Ecclesiastes. Uh, and it kind of jumps around a little bit as it sets the stage for uh, the main part of the, the passage in chapter 2. But it's, so it's chapter 1, verse 2, then chapter 1, 12 to 14, then chapter 2, 18 to 26. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all if, is vanity. I, the preacher, have been king over Israel in Jerusalem. And I applied my heart to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven. It is an unhappy business that God has given to the children of man to be busy with. I have seen everything that is done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and a striving after the wind. I hated all my toil in which I toil under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to the man who will come after me. And who knows whether he will be wise or a fool. Yet he will be master of all for which I toiled and used my wisdom under the sun. This is also vanity. So I turned about and gave my heart up to despair over all the toil of my labors under the sun. Because sometimes a person who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave everything to be enjoyed by someone who did not toil for it. This is, this also is vanity, a great evil. What has a man from all the toil and striving of heart with which he toils beneath the sun? For all his days are full of sorrow and his work is a vexation. Even in the night, his heart does not rest. This is also vanity. There is nothing better for a person than that he should eat and drink and find enjoyment in his toil. This also, I saw, is from the hand of God. For apart from him, who can eat or who can have enjoyment? For to the one who pleases him, God has given wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner, he has given the business of gathering and collecting only to give to the one who pleases God. This is also vanity 
and a striving after the wind. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to you, O God. What is my purpose? Right? What is the meaning of life? What's the meaning of all this? I've had that conversation with a lot of people over the years, both as a pastor and even before that. What, what am I doing here? You know, they may say, you know, it kind of feels like maybe I'm coasting through life and it all feels just so meaningless. And this is where our preacher from our reading comes to. As he looks out there and he says, this is all vanity. When you hear vanity, he means meaningless waste. Just, it's a striving after the wind, as he says. It's just a waste. And when he says vanity of vanities, that's like this is utterly wasted, utterly meaningless. What is the point of all this? And he is frustrated by this. And this is who? Who wrote Ecclesiastes? Solomon, right? He says, I was king of Jerusalem. He's the one who God gave all this wisdom to. If you remember when Solomon was preparing to become king, God said, whatever you want, I will give you. Just ask for it. And Solomon says, I want wisdom so I can serve you and serve your people well. And God says, because you asked for wisdom, I'm going to give you long life and wealth and all these other things too. And so here, Solomon has all this wisdom, and it helps with the kingdom. It helps in his life in many ways, but also it's a hardship because he can't just go through life fat, dumb, and happy, right? He cannot just be blissfully ignorant and be, oh, you know, life's great, everything's good. Instead, he looks out at the world, and he sees injustice. He sees people living their lives and working their fingers to the bone and then dying and they didn't get to enjoy any of it. And he says, this is meaningless. Like, what are you doing? Utterly meaningless. And it's one of the things that I love about the Bible is that the Bible doesn't shy away from these harder topics. It doesn't paint the world in rosy colors. Like, it's all just kind of perfect. It says, you know, there's some real difficulties out here. There's some really difficult things. You know, why is there evil in the world? Why do good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people? Why is it that it just seems like life can be so meaningless at times and all this work that we do just means nothing? And that's where our preacher is, right? And he gives this very honest statement in verses 18 to 21 where he says, I hated my work. I looked at all this meaningless of it and I absolutely hated what I was doing. I hated my life. I hated my work because it was just meaningless. And then he says, I gave into despair. Now, he just got depressed. And maybe you've been there. Maybe you are there. And he was there, and he says, you know what? There's got to be something. There's got to be meaning in something. So he says, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to set my mind to figuring this out. So he does. He tries a whole bunch of stuff. And he's king, so he can try a whole bunch of stuff that maybe you and I can't always try. He had a lot more things to be able to do. And so he goes out and tries to do all this stuff. And the first place that he starts is in self-indulgence which is probably where we all would start. I'm just going to do whatever I want to do. Whatever I think is going to make me happy, whatever looks good to me, that's what I'm going to do. And that's what he did. He got wealth, and he, he built monuments to himself, and he had slaves to do his bidding. He had musicians and singers and, and sex and, and all these different things. In fact, he says, whatever uh, my eyes desired, I did not keep from them. I kept my heart from no pleasure. I'm just going to do whatever I want to do. But it wasn't there. It wasn't there. And maybe you've tried some of this. Maybe you've gone down this road. Maybe you are going down this road. I think we certainly know others who have gone down this road if we don't think that we have. You know, you think about the, the super wealthy people that we know, that we know of. We probably don't know them, right? And how many of them have we seen get to this ridiculous amount of money and say, folks, it's not here? Or they get there and they've earned more than, than we could even imagine of ever having, 
And they're like, no, I need just a little bit more. Just a little bit more and then I will have it. But even Solomon in Ecclesiastes said, those who love money will never be satisfied by it. It's never enough. Or what about Hollywood? Right? You look at Hollywood, at the celebrities that we're told we should idolize, that we should wish we were them. And how many of them are drunk and on drugs to numb it all? How many have been in failed marriage after failed marriage if they even bother to get married anymore? How many have been abused and horribly mistreated? How many have committed suicide? It's not there. But now we have Facebook and we have, even better, we have Snapchat and Instagram and, and all of these, you know, TikTok and everything. You can become an influencer now. You don't have to go through Hollywood. You can do it from your living room. And we have people who are influencers who will do all kinds of things. Some of them are cool. Some of them are pretty ridiculous to get subscribers. But I've heard several of these people talk about how they live on edge because they know that if they say just a little bit of the wrong thing or they do something off or maybe just something that's not cool enough that it could all be gone in a heartbeat. It's not there either. But you know, those are all those people, right? That's not us, but it is us, isn't it? We're there too. Even us in the church who would love to say, it's always and only Jesus Christ all the time. That's the only place I look. But the truth is, we look other places, don't we? If I just had a little more money, I don't need the money that they have. I don't need ridiculous, just a little more. Then I would be satisfied. If I lost just a few more pounds, then life would be good. Right? If I was just in with the right crowd, if I had these friends, they have fun all the time, then life would be good. If I just get the next promotion, if my spouse and I would just do this or that, and whatever. If this, then just that little bit more, then I will be satisfied. But it's never really enough, is it? It's always just a step away. And that's what Solomon found. He found there was just nothing in this self-indulgence. It was empty. So then he turns to wisdom. Wisdom's good, right? We like wisdom. And he says, if I can just be wise, <coughs> excuse me, if I can make all the right choices, if I can obey God's commands, if I can do everything right, then life will be good, right? Then life will be meaningful and have purpose. And we love this one in the church, right? Because... I get to look pious. I get to look like a good Christian, right? Who can, who can fault me for wanting to be wise? Who can fault me for wanting to obey God's command? Certainly no one. I might even get praised by the church as being, you know, dedicated and pious and just this great person. But if we're looking to those things, to our wisdom, to, to our works, to find our meaning and satisfaction, we won't find it there either. Because none of us, none of us live in all wisdom and knowledge all the time. We don't make all the right choices, right? Do you? Do you? No? No, I don't. Right? We don't do all the right things. We don't always follow God's commands. We're all sinners, every single one of us. And yeah, we may, you know, go after this one sin and kind of beat it down and get it under control and then another one pops up. Right? Or maybe we, we, we get this good, holy uh, discipline and we start doing this. I'm going to read my Bible every day and we're doing really great with that. But then you realize, oh, some of these other ones are slipping away. I don't really do those things anymore. Right? Or even if somehow we suppress all of these outward sins so people don't see them, our minds always betray us. Right? We can never rid ourselves of it. And not only did Solomon discover that, but he also saw the same thing that we see out in life every single day where you look out and we say, it doesn't seem to matter. 
People are living wise, people are living foolish, and they're still dealing with the same tragedies, the same struggles. They're still getting sick. They're still losing children. They're still dying. Wise or fool doesn't seem to matter. He says it's all vanity. It's all meaningless. But then he lands on it. And he says this. He says, finally, there is nothing better for a person than that he should eat and drink and find enjoyment or to see the good in his toil. It sounds so simple, doesn't it? Just eat, drink, and find enjoyment in what you do. See the good in it. And we make things so complicated all the time. He says it's really not that complicated. And he follows it up with this. He says, for the one who pleases God, or who pleases him, God has given wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner, he has given the business of gathering and collecting only to give to the one who pleases God. Which begs the question, how can I be the one who pleases God? And how can I make sure I'm not the sinner who's living this utterly futile life? And that one the answer to that is simple as well. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. He's the one who makes us pleasing before God. He's the one who makes us to not be a sinner. We are holy and righteous in God's sight because of Jesus Christ. Yes, we still sin, but we are holy and righteous, sinner and saint, because of Jesus because of his very meaningful work on the cross. Right? That, his sacrifice was not vanity. It was not meaningless. In fact, his sacrifice, his work on the cross was the most meaningful, purpose-filled toil under the sun that has ever been done. And it was done for you. Right, there's a great irony here. Because Solomon complains. And listen to this complaint that he says. This is what Solomon says. He says, sometimes a person who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill, having great success, must leave everything to be enjoyed by someone who did not toil for it. And then he follows that up by saying, this also is vanity and a great evil. And when he says evil, he doesn't mean moral evil. He means like a, this stinks, right? This is, this is just a, a rotten deal, and it's meaningless. But do you see it? Jesus toiled with all wisdom and knowledge and skill all his life, and especially in his greatest and most difficult toil of, his, of all, his death on the cross and resurrection. And it is you and I, you and me, who get to enjoy that. We are the ones who benefit from it, even though we didn't do a thing. Even though we didn't earn it, we couldn't earn it, we didn't toil for it. He did it. And we enjoy the benefit of it. And that is not vanity. That is not meaningless or evil or bad. That is the most meaningful thing for us. That is the greatest good. It's in Jesus' work, not our own, but in his work that we are made pleasing before God and that we are not sinners, that we are holy and righteous before him. And so because of that, because of his work, we can now eat and drink knowing that the God who, who cares after the birds of the air and the, the flowers of the field, who, who cares for them in such grandeur, but loves you so much more, will care for you. 
and you can find enjoyment in your work because you know that it is given from him. It is all out of the hand of God for you. And we even then find the purpose and the meaning for ourselves and our lives because in Jesus, all things find their purpose and their meaning. You have meaning and purpose because of Jesus Christ. Your work has meaning and purpose because of Jesus Christ, because it's no longer just work being done that's going to fade away at the end of the day. It is now work that has been given to you by the God of the universe, whatever your vocation, that now is being done in service of him and your neighbor. And that goes on. Your work has meaning. Your life has meaning. Right? It has meaning in it. And all of these things, even, even the things that are, that are, we would call worldly, find their meaning in Christ. Wealth is no longer this thing that's pursued for its own sake and will never satisfy now. It is a gift from God that is for us, that is to care for us, to care for our family, to care for those in need, to, to provide for the ministry that we're doing to bring Christ to people. Fame is now a platform to show the love of Jesus Christ and to proclaim his gospel. Music is a means of praising the Lord. Right? Wisdom. Wisdom in Christ, well, I should say the wisdom of God is Christ. That's what the scriptures tell us. He is the wisdom of God. And yes, the, the, wis, the people who live with wisdom or the fools of the world, they will both die and they will be forgotten. But for those who have the wisdom of God, who have Jesus Christ, they will not die. And the Father will never forget them. He will never forget you. And he will bring you to be with him for all of eternity. So yes, all this stuff is meaningless. All this work is meaningless outside of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the one thing that brings meaning and purpose and he brings it to all things. And you get to enjoy it even though you didn't earn it. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you provide for our lives, you provide for our spirit, and you provide meaning and purpose in life. Lord, I pray that you would help us as we look at our own lives, at the things that you have given us to do, the vocations you have put in our lives, to care for our families, to do whatever work it is that we do, to minister to our neighbor, all these different vocations that you have given us, Lord, and help us to see them through you. Help us to be rich towards God, to be rich towards you in Christ, in his wisdom, so that all of these things have purpose in you and remind us the simplicity to eat and drink and find enjoyment and joy in the work that you have given us. Because who can do it without you? Who can eat and drink without you, whether it's at the supper table or at your table? And who can enjoy work without you? It is all from your hand, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, we continue with the prayers of the church. And I don't have a pen, so if you have a pen. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Awesome. All right. Okay, and I need to change our stuff here. All right, so it's still, the online stuff isn't working right. 
So if you want to text in your prayer request, please text it to me personally. My number is 813-326-5255. Again, that's 813-326-5255. I'll have my phone on here. And there we go. All right, and if you're in the room, let's do it. Yes. Okay. So Ruben in the ICU with neurological and cognitive issues. All right. Yes. Yeah. One of my coworkers, Joanna, got in a car accident. Ooh. Say Joanna. Right. Do you know how she is? Please. I don't think it was okay, but I have Okay. So it was in an accident, but okay. All right, Judy. Sorry, Nancy Shield. So, and she has complications, so they can't treat her yet. That's what you're saying. Okay. Okay. Um, yes, Shayla. Uh, of dealing with that. So their child has diabetes, but they're also dealing just with a lot of marital issues. And yeah. Yeah, life does like to throw a lot at us. Yeah. All right, I'll put out a praise that we're here. So we had a good vacation and we're safe travels and all that kind of stuff. And we also had a good trip yesterday to Aquatica with the church folks, so that was good, and uh, everyone healthy and everything from that. Oh. Yeah? Um, I'm, I was out, I don't know said it for Lorna. What's that? Pray for Lorna. Oh yeah, and I haven't seen, I haven't, I need to ask her how she's doing, but yeah, we'll just keep her and her family in prayers. So Lorna was, the reason she wasn't here singing last week was she got COVID like so many other folks have, so. Um, I think she's doing all right, but yeah. All right. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. At the end of each petition, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, if you please respond with your prayers. Let us pray. All is vanity, Lord, without the grace and comfort of your word and spirit. Guard our hearts against pride and arrogance and a life rich in things but poor in spirit. Give to us wise hearts that we may find our meaning and purpose in Jesus, that we would love rightly all that you have made and use that to your purpose and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guard your church, Lord, and give her honorable and noble men for the office of holy ministry, gracious and devoted men and women commissioned for church work and congregations filled with your spirit, showing love and sharing the gospel in their various vocations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give all husbands and wives fidelities to their vows and promises. Help all parents to teach their children to know and love the Lord. Guide all single adults that they might find fulfill fulfillment in their service to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, give our nation and its leaders humility before you that they might recognize the vanity world of worldly plans and be ready to serve you by serving their citizens. Lord, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be near the suffering, Lord, the dying and the grieving. Sustain them in the truth that their lives are even now hidden with Christ in God, and that when he appears, they will also appear with him in glory. 
Lord, we especially lift up Reuben, who's in the ICU with neurological and cognitive issues, and pray for his healing. We pray that you would guide the doctors and nurses as they treat and try to understand what's going on. Lord, be with Joanna, who suffered in an accident, and we pray for her healing and recovery. Be with Nancy Shield, who was diagnosed with uh, non-Hopkins lymphoma and uh, needs to be treated for that, Lord, but there's also complications preventing that, and so we pray for your healing hand in that situation. Lord, be with Shayla's friend whose child was diagnosed with diabetes, Lord. We pray for his, his or her healing, uh, but we also pray for uh, the parents and their, their marriage as they deal with the, the stress of, of the diabetes, but also all the other things that are going on in their lives. Lord, we pray that they would turn to you and that in you, you would give them uh, the purpose, that you would give them uh, the forgiveness and the hope, and that you would bring them back together. Lord, uh, we pray for Lorna and for all those who are, are dealing with or have been, uh, have been dealing with COVID, and we pray for your healing and an end to this disease. Lord, we also come to you in our praises and thanksgiving, and we thank you for uh, safe travels for, for my family and others um, over this past uh, week and a half. Uh, we also uh, thank you for the opportunity we had to go to Aquatica with uh, various people from our church as well as friends, and uh, that everyone was, was safe and had a good time there. And Lord, uh, we also pray for Tim. We thank you that he was able to fill in last week and pray that you would be with him as he uh, goes to the seminary and trains to be a pastor, that you would bless him in that endeavor, you would watch over he and his family and his marriage as they do that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, answer all doubt and fear with confidence in your word and sacraments, that by these means of grace we may be kept in holiness and guarded from temptation and despair until the day when you bring all things to their perfect fulfillment, and we are delivered to everlasting life through Jesus Christ. Lord, we also lift up those who are suffering uh, from the floods in the Midwest, Lord, and we pray for your comfort and uh, for your provision in those cases. We pray all this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. If you please rise. If you're able, as we continue with the, by proclaiming our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you and his favor and give you peace. Amen. You can be seated as we join together in our closing song, our closing hymn, how great thou art. 
Amen. All right, well, thank you all once again for being here and for uh, worshiping with us. And for those of you who are online with us, we are grateful to have you uh, worshiping with, you, uh, with us as well um, and hope to see you here in person soon. Uh, a couple of upcoming events and things to announce. Uh, so we've talked about having the financial peace class. Uh, we haven't had any signups yet. So I've talked to a few people and a lot of people have done the class before and feel like they kind of have the gist of what it is. So we're, um, after having some conversations, we may do uh, some, differing, some different things that might add a little bit more than what that class offers. Um, some budgeting things, but also some some planning things that uh, would be helpful. So um, just trying to see what will be most beneficial for people, but we'll get information about, out about that uh, in the coming weeks. Um, then we also have the council meeting coming up on August 16th. That's now on a Tuesday instead of a Monday. Um, and that'll be at the Strasheims uh, this time. And uh, so if you're on the council, make a note. And if you're not, but you have something that you'd like addressed at the council, then let us know and we can do that. And next week we got our youth service and we're gonna be hearing from some of our youth um, as they have come back from the, the youth gathering and just to be able to share a little bit about their experience and uh, some of the things that we got to do. And so even, where's Eli, I, I even lassoed a, a fake cow. So, you know, that was one of the things that, that I was able to do. That's right, oh, it was a, it was a steer. That's right. We, we were looking up definitions <laughs> while we were waiting. Trying to, is that a cow? Is it not a cow? Is it, yes. The next potluck is to be the second Sunday. So it'll be the 14th of August is the second Sunday. So we do, all, do those every second Sunday. Yes. All right. Any other announcements? Yes. No, we don't have to this week. No, <laughs> at, faith, <laughs> at, at faithwesleychapel.com, yes. Yes. Yeah, name and address, either on paper to Renee or sent to me. Um, and we're going to, this week, now that I'm back, we're going to make some cards that we'll have in the back each week that will be specifically for this so that uh, when you have someone prayed for, you'll be able to, to give that in. Awesome. Thank you for bringing that up. Any others? Um, just need two people to count the offering. Okay, we need two unrelated people to count offerings. So if you're able to do that, see Aaron. Um, and then lastly, as you were alluding to, Larry, we do not have to clean up this week because they are closed this week for the dance studio. Yay! So we can leave everything set up. We'll just, you know, it's just a matter of cleaning up with the communion and things like that. But yes.
set of banners that would be for worship. So if you're artistic or you have some ideas, stick to not because uh, I think they would not care if you did something that did not uh, have a, a major impact on your wall, but we hung them in a, in a way that could be done that way. And then the focus of the worship service could be that and we could maybe even move the altar out so that it has to uh, speak from behind the pulpit, you know, like you do in some of the churches. But just think about it. And if you have something, get your pen and your, your colored pencil. Um, <laughs> your crayons. <laughs> your, your felt. Oh. All right. So go in peace, serve the Lord. Have a great week.